Tim Marshall. Welcome to R&B Showcase Live. We got a great show here for you today. As a matter of fact, we have a recording. You know, nothing takes the place of live music and live entertainment. And this young man is going to be performing from his brand new CD on 1030 International Records called Dr. Otis Williams Presents Kyle Mack, Shaky Ground. And going to talk about the CD and listen to some live music. Let's welcome to the show our special guest, Kyle Mack. <laughs> See, I'm the kind of guy who doesn't believe that she'll be his head, no Cause I believe a woman should be treated with the unfortunate Don't be ashamed, don't sell up the blame This call will not be over hey. Oh, find a heart that you've always been looking for yeah. How can anybody ask for my oh, oh, oh. See, I like going in doors, picking up your hanky off the floor Treat her like a lady she smokes even Oh, oh treat her like a lady In this world of liberation It's so easy to forget I know it gets hard sometimes And it's so nice to have a man around To learn to help an end You can be, but you can't, baby Oh, yeah When I was young My mama used to say, boy a flower with love on her you shower ever since that day her words never went away i always will remember to treat my woman tender you'll find a heart that you've always been looking for i can get anybody ask for my oh, 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 oh. see i like coming in doors picking up your hand off the floor Oh yeah Listen, she's a bad son of a gun I've been loving down the Every day, every way yeah. yeah, she's a bad son of a gun I've been loving down the one You'll find a heart that you've always been looking for yeah. How can anybody ask for my oil? See, I like coming in doors, picking up your hanky off the floor. Treat her like a lady. Light a cigarette if she smokes even. Oh, treat her like a lady. Compliment her on her care, even help her with a chair. Treat her like a lady. To be a gentleman, treat her like a lady. Don't you know you better treat her like, treat her like, treat her like a lady. You got to treat her like, treat her like, treat her like a lady. You got to treat her like, treat her like, treat her like a lady. You got to treat her like, treat her like, treat her like a lady. Hey, 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 hey. Mm, yeah, 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 I got you right here, lady. I want you to fantasize about a life with 
everything A life so full of love A life with a man who cares to know What in the world you've been dreaming of And I can't fulfill You every want and desire Baby, don't you know You got my heart so hot on fire Legendary Spinners, and you're watching R&B Showcase Live with Tim Marshall on Philly Cam. Welcome back to R&B Showcase Live. Joining me now is our special guest, and he was signed to the first record label by Dr. Otis Williams of The Temptations. And he's the last surviving original member of The Temptations. And this young man has made history by being signed to that historic record label, the very first artist signed to the label. Our special guest, Kyle Mack, and welcome to the show, Kyle. Thank you very much for having me, Tim. Well, it's good to have you with us, and uh, this is very exciting. First of all, congratulations on that performance. Outstanding job, as always. Oh, thank you. Appreciate well, it. All right. Treat her like a lady. Yeah, that was uh, it's a cover of a Temptations tune. Had the, had the, the privilege of actually re-recording the song uh, with the actual Temptations there in the studio, recording uh, background vocals on it, so... All right, tell us about the experience working with the uh, historic and legendary Temptations. Now, we do know they're celebrating their 60th anniversary, or Motown is celebrating 60th yes. anniversary this year. Right. And Temptations were part of that history. So for you to be signed to this label is really a piece of history. So tell us about your experiences being signed to that label. Well, my time with the label was, 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 uh, it was, it was very um, interesting. I got to learn a whole lot. 
uh, and being able to record a CD with uh, this group that I've idolized ever since I was a child was... If you had told my 14-year-old self that something like that would have happened, that would have uh, probably slapped you. <laughs> but uh, no, it, it was really a dream dream come true. And very, uh, I was very much in awe the entire time because it was really my first time in a professional recording environment. You know, so the producer, Dave Darling, uh, spent a lot of time with me trying to, you know, make sure I got, you got the best product out of me. And so, but the Temptations, when they came through just to record the background parts, I mean, they've been singing that song for, what, since 1984? Mm -hmm. They came in and whipped those background vocals out in, like, what, 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. And just true professional icons, you know? Treat her like a lady. The Temptations, Ollie Woodson. Dynamic singer, yeah, and he's the lead singer on that song. Is that someone that you um, looked up to as a as a young? Oh, definitely, artist? definitely. Uh, you have that sound. You've captured that sound. I appreciate. Tell us about that. I appreciate you're too kind. Um, Ollie Woodson was definitely a, a a huge influence on me, as well as the multitude of other lead singers the Temptations had over there. You know, of course, of their history. You know, they had not only Ollie Woodson, but of course, you had David Ruff and Dennis Edwards. Mm -hmm. um, I even love Lewis Price, mm -hmm. uh, Theo Peoples, oh, yeah. a great one. Uh, GC Cameron, mm -hmm. Barrington Henderson, Terry Weeks, mm -hmm. Bruce Williamson, who's my godfather, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, and all, so th those those guys throughout history, you know, they they've each left their very important mark on the group, mm -hmm. bringing their own talents mm -hmm. uh, to a magnificent legacy. Do you want to share the story, Carl, how you got with the label? How did this happen? Yeah, so I um, I have been following the group since I was a kid. I first met the Temptations when I was 14 years old. And uh, so I had known them for about 10 or so years at the time when I got signed by Otis. What happened was uh, I had gone to a Temptation sound check. Now, I know the band and the, and the, for the Temptations well enough that when the singers are not there, which they often are not because they're resting before their show, but the band still has to go to the house, the theater, to do, the, you know, do their audio and check their sound. So they know me well enough. Hey, Kyle, grab a mic and do the sound check with us. And my friend and, uh, and uh, business partner, Kevin White, was there and shot video of me doing the sound check on his phone. And I put the video on YouTube. Um, about a year later, I was uh, at the Borgata Atlantic City, and the Temptations were doing the show, and Otis was doing an interview for this documentary about Sigma Sound in Philly. Um, after the interview was over, uh, I went up to him, and, and I was just talking, hey, how you doing? And uh, previously, me and his road manager, Derek Porter, were having a conversation about uh, sound check, and I showed him the video, and uh, Otis wanted to see the video. And the video was of me doing Tree Like a Lady and Papa Was a Rolling Stone and Just My Imagination doing all their choreography too by myself, which kind of looked weird, but mm -hmm. it was fun. Um, and he's watching the video and his reaction at first was like he just shook his head. Like, mm -hmm. And I thought he was just, you know, was just amused. And his response to that was, man, we got to do something with you. We got to do something with you. And I thought he was just being nice. And then Derek Porter, he said, uh, no, if he says that, he's serious. We exchanged uh, contact information, and I got a contract in the mail from Otis's attorneys uh, about two months later. And about uh, two months later after that, after you get, always get your contracts reviewed mm -hmm. by the proper people. Absolutely. Um, and after, so about two months after that, I, I signed it. And, and then, what, a few weeks later, he flew me out to L.A., and we uh, recorded Treat Like a Lady with the Temptations. Mm. Backing yep. you on the song. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first single, and then we did the rest of the EP for uh, Shaky Ground. Mm -hmm. This is the LP. Dr. Otis Williams presents Kyle Mack, yeah. Shaky Ground. And you selected certain songs on here. You have a, a, an original on here as well, right? Yes, the original is a song called uh, Here I Am. Mm -hmm. I wrote it. I wrote it uh, probably around 2013 when I was still in the Air Force. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I want to thank you for your service to, oh, I appreciate our, to our country it. as a military it's man. no problem. What did you do? What was your job in the Air Force? I was an aircraft mechanic Okay. the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. Then for one of those years, I actually spent on the, on the road touring with the Air Force's entertainment unit called mm -hmm. Thompson Blue. Okay. Where we did a... That's a renowned uh, touring Yeah, band. and it, was, it lasted for 60 years before it disbanded. Okay. 
Yeah. In fact, Terry Weeks of the Temptations mm-hmm. did it when he was mm-hmm. in the Air Force in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but that was a that was a hundred. I'm sorry, no, an hour and forty five minute show. Uh, full of choreography, costume changes, mm. elaborate sets. We travel with sixty four thousand pounds of stage equipment wow. from from uh, city to city mm-hmm. in two tractor trailers. We have set all that equipment up ourselves. You're talking about maybe like twenty something hour days between setup, rehearsal, the show, mm-hmm. breakdown, and get a nap somewhere in there mm-hmm. at some point. Mm-hmm. Most of our sleeping was done on the bus. Okay. Yeah, um, but yeah, so. For one of those years, I, I like I said, I was I was touring with them, but the majority of the time I was an aircraft mechanic. Mm-hmm. Other than the Temptations, because this music, um, you know, you being a younger person, now, why not Drake? Why not Bruno Mars? How did you migrate toward this music as a young person, and why is it important that we keep this sound alive? I think a lot of it has to I have to give credit to my grandmother actually, because while she didn't listen to old school R and B, she did listen to a lot of old school music. And listening to oldies radio, um, you you know you're, you're going to hear old school like doo you know, all the soul groups from the '50s and '60s where you know where it started. And I became entranced with uh, harmonies. In fact, I remember the first time I really really felt the harmonies of an R&B group was when we were listening around the Christmas season. My grandmother had the Billboard 1955 Best Christmas Song CD and the Drifters version of White Christmas was on there. And listening to Clyde McFadder and Bill Pinckney Mm -hmm. uh, with their very vast different ranges Mm -hmm. and the harmonies of the rest of the Drifters in the background really captivated me. Mm -hmm. And I think natural progression as I grew older, just R&B in general Mm -hmm. really, really uh, resonated Mm -hmm. with me. So it's not just it's old school R&B has has it set the the standard for what good music is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a lot of the artists that we have now have a, a lot to owe mm-hmm. and to thank for those uh, old school artists. Now, out of the new artists, who do you admire that's out there right now mm-hmm. other than yourself? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> don't don't phrase me that way. Nah, uh, nah. Oh. Um I think a new school uh, artist I like, um, well, I definitely like Bruno. I like, mm-hmm. uh, well, he, not necessarily old school, uh, new school, because uh, they started around the 90s, but like Maxwell and mm-hmm. Kem and Anthony Hamilton, they have like those really soulful uh, voices with vast ranges. And, um, but like Roe James, I like, mm-hmm. there's, you know, and there was a time where I wasn't really like feeling everything that was coming out that was new, but I feel like mm-hmm. R&B is starting to come back to a level of respectability where it's mm-hmm. not just sounding like uh, uh, R&B vocals on, on just Pops tracks, you know? Mm-hmm. So, What's next for Kyle Mack? I mean, you, you worked with The Temptations and you had this great album. It's actually EP yeah. on there. So There's you, uh, five tracks on there. <laughs> yeah, you, you won that. You, five tracks on there. Okay, so these are very specific songs you selected for this, this uh, album. Tell us about why you chose, you, you actually chose one from each lead singer, I think, didn't you? I did, yeah. yeah. Um, Was that done purposely? Yeah. Otis said, hey, what songs you want to do? I'm like, okay, I'll do these. Um, you got a David, you got a Dennis, you got an Ollie Woodson. Yeah, you know, they're all very big influences on me. Mm-hmm. And I think all those are really my favorite songs that each of those lead singers mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. Uh, all I need is the, is the second track. Uh, that's my favorite Dennis. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, my favorite David, David lead. Right. And then uh, "Shaky Ground" is actually the first track. That's my, that's that's a funky jam right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's my that's my uh, that's my my favorite Dennis mm-hmm. led song. And "Treated Like a Lady." If... Well, you've certainly um, done a lot with this great album, and we wish you much success in your future. And I thank you for stopping by R and B Showcase. And our door is always open. And when you get some new material, come see us again. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right, Kyle. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. All right. Tim Marshall, R&B Showcase Live. And I think it's important that we get right into this. And, and people out there that listen to the High Than Seven radio show on a weekly basis, that really enjoy what we talk about and the passion that we have and what we do, I think it's really important for us to pay homage into who inspires us. And one of the big reasons why we continue to come every Sunday and really embark on this radio show journey is because of this man right here, Mr. Tim Marshall from the R&B Showcase. Every Sunday we come in, Tim is here two hours before we even get on the air, just playing good music, enjoying everything that he does about DJing, being a radio host, creating the art that 
paves the way for so many people's careers because in order to be a really big star, it's important to understand that your, your record got to make it to the radio. And the DJs are the curators of what's out there and what's cool and what's hot and what's not. So without getting right into it, I want to get right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Tim Marshall from the RB Showcase. Mr. Tim Marshall, how you doing today, sir? How you doing, man? Thank you for having me on the show. This is quite an honor, really, to be here on your show. There's no greater honor than to be on with the people that you work with. It's well, great. Well, like, like we mentioned, mm -hmm. you really inspire us to continue to go. And Thank you. with 4th of July coming up and Independence Day, understanding being an independent brand mm -hmm. and being an independent radio show, yes. independent DJ, you have to have real passion for it. Mm -hmm. And you coordinate with other independents. Mm -hmm. And so we really thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I want to jump right into it. Where did you get your start from being a radio DJ and your passion for music? Loving music, brother. Okay. Loving music. The first record I've ever bought was Pop Was a Rolling Stone by The Temptations in 1972. Today, I still have that same 45 on the Gordy label, Motown Gordy label. It's got a chip taken out of it. And I still have that same 45, the very first 45 that I bought. And just listening to this music, and I want to learn more about this, the music. Because we grew up in, in an era of Soul Train and all those American bandstand, all the television shows. You didn't have MTV, and you didn't have all of the things you had. You definitely didn't have the internet. You didn't have all the access to the music. So anytime you could really see these artists was like shows like American Bandstand or even uh, going back, well, Soul Train, American Bandstand, even Ed Sullivan going back further. That was the only time you'd ever see musical acts, your heroes, the Supremes, and Temptations on television. And even had a chance to be exposed to their music. And then it was done differently then. The music broke out regionally before it, came. it didn't just become national hits. Yeah. There were hits that were just only hits in Philadelphia. Some of the great B-sides were only in just in Philadelphia area, certain areas. And then you go to different towns. You go to New York's a different sound altogether. And you go to LA's a different sound. So it, it was just done differently. You know, you had the radio day where you go and the DJ, people like Georgie Woods out of Philadelphia, who was an absolute legend who from, from this area who broke a lot of the artists at the famous Uptown Theater Uptown Theater in uh, Philadelphia. My good friend Kimberly Roberts uh, wrote a book about the Uptown Theater and she's uh, with the Philadelphia Tribune. What is the name of that book? It's, uh, it's Uptown Theater. I don't know the exact name. She but, but, but check it out. But Uptown I, I, Theater, it's a book out there. Book, it's go a online. book out about the Uptown Theater. Wow. She'd be a good guest for you to have on your show okay. too because she's very informative. You can tell you all and especially when it comes to the standpoint of history. Yes. Oh, there's so much history right here in Philadelphia. Broad and Dolphin, I think it is. Or Broad yeah. yeah. Yeah, right there, uh huh. Yeah, right, right, right by Temple. Temple University, Not too far yes. from Brad and Dom at Brad and Dom. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, it, speaking of history, to know where we're where we were at, to know where we're going. Mm -hmm. From the growth of music and you being a radio DJ, how have you seen the change, good or bad, that has happened with music and in the industry? Well, music has changed tremendously over the years. I mean, we've gotten away from the instrumentations, you know. Yeah. I mean, nothing, nothing, nothing takes the place of live music. You may even see an artist usually that you like today, a hip hop artist or an artist out there, that, what's the guy, 21 Savage? 21 Savage. When yeah. he performs, he performs a live band. He performs a And it sounds band. great. Yes, it does. You know, it's, I mean, I'm not knocking his music. I mean, I don't listen to that stuff that I don't but, but the it, thing about it, when he's got that live music behind him, it is a whole different thing. And watching this guy on television with a suit on and everything, I said, you know what? He's got it. He's got it. He, he's got what, what it is. But, but being able to have it, mm -hmm. too, it, he was able to learn from the mm -hmm. ones before him. Absolutely. To what worked. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of people are using um, DAWs and, and, and synthesizers mm -hmm. and, and not uh, going away from analog. A mm -hmm. lot of the stuff is digital. Digital mm -hmm. was the word that I'm looking for. Right. It, the digital derives from the actual mm -hmm. natural analog sound, the pure mm -hmm. instrument, which sure. is, which takes us back to our roots. I mean, everything, mm -hmm. the, the universe is connected by vibrations. Mm -hmm. So that drum and all that, knowing that you have these young kids that are doing stuff digitally, mm -hmm. do you see music coming back to that where artists will, and musicians and producers will start producing more with actual instruments. I would like to say, so. I, I think so. Okay. Because, you know, a lot of the artists, like, the, even that's that song, what is it called? A Lot? Who's the group that has a lot? Yeah, yeah. That, well, that's Savage. 21 Savage. Okay, so that yeah. was an, it was another group, um, the, I can't remember the, uh, the 
song called Love for All Seasons. I think The Fuzz is the name of the group. Okay. And that's where they get that sample from. That, that's, that song is sampled from that. A lot of these artists, um, even Kendrick Lamar samples a lot from, yes. from different artists. There's a lot of samples used, and they listen to Grandma or Grandpop's records because they know that's good stuff there. Yes, that is you know good what stuff. I mean? So I, I think that it will actually go back because a lot of those people are coming up back out and they're getting dressed to go on stage. That's one thing I've always, you know, like, how could you, well, how could you go on stage with the same thing you're walking around, bumming around the street? Sure, sure. You know sure. what I mean? This just doesn't look showbiz to me what what what, what even within that maturity has mm -hmm. to take place you know right. hip-hop is still young mm -hmm. hip-hop is a, is a genre of music mm -hmm. and a form of music is, is still maybe in its teenage years mm -hmm. we'll say that mm -hmm. it hasn't gotten to its adult years mm -hmm. its mature years where it's been around for a hundred years mm -hmm. and people have already seen what's worked and what's not so it, it, it is maturing they're seeing what's working what's not there's a lot on the line and people don't want to lose that mm -hmm. there's a lot of money on the line that mm -hmm. the money might not have been there before for a regular person it wasn't you know you know I mean, I'm not knocking it because, you know, the, the genre is now called hip hop and R&B. If, yeah. if you go to, you know, satellite radio stuff, it doesn't just say R&B radio. It's hip hop, R&B. It's kind of like come together. You know, you say the word R&B and it's really important that people know the history of R&B because mm -hmm. R&B showcases the name of your show. Mm -hmm. Can you give us the history of R&B and, and how it derived from its early roots? Possibly maybe just starting in the industry and as Rhythm far as blues, okay. R&B music, race music was called back in the day. And it was this predominantly African-American artists were producing this sound. Now, later on in the 60s, you started getting blue eyed soul singers that came by, magnificent men, even Hall and Oates, who were a group called the Temptones back in the day. From Philly? From Philadelphia. And um, now one thing I like about Daryl Hall and John Oates is they, they in late in the 80s, later years, they gave back to the Temptations. They brought back David Ruffin and Eddie Kendricks, the original members of the Temptations, the original voices that you hear on My Girl Ain't Too Proud to Bag and The Way You Do the Things You Do, Views Only Skin Deep, and all those great classics. They bought that, they were their heroes. They learned from them guys. So what they do, they bought them back and they had they had uh, Live at the Apollo featuring David Ruffin and Eddie Kendricks, mm. you know, Daryl Hall and John Oates. So they gave back to the people that inspired them, which I think is a really good thing to do. Yes, it's really you know, good. I, I like to do some of that with some of the DJs that inspired me. There were many, I learned from, I have really, my, what my, I, my job is to bridge that gap. You know, a lot of the radio, especially in this area, Philadelphia radio, you know, a lot of the guys that started back in the day are, not, are no longer on the air anymore. You know, we've lost a lot over the years, high lid, butterball, Georgie Woods, the man with the goods, you know, a lot of those great legendary people. I mean, Jerry Blavitt is still around, you know, Harvey Holiday just retired. So there's a lot of those people that were keeping that sound alive that are just not around anymore. So I think it's, you know, there's people like Jeff Wyman out of Philadelphia. There's people that are still doing it, but it's not very many. And that's why it's important you know? for you to continue to do what you're yes. doing. Mm -hmm.